Welcome back, everyone. It is 11.5 of 2015. We're going to continue with uh, Jean Hippolyte and his treatise on Hegel, but we have a uh, lesson four, and we're going to take a look at uh, the realm of self-consciousness in its entirety. And what's beautiful about this is that it ends up with uh, a, a conclusion that deals with uh, the hypostatic union as a one externality combining the phenomenal and the actual. So it's really a great uh, lesson that uh, Jean Hippolyte gives us this time, and it uh, really does reflect his interpretation of Hegel as being viewed through the hermeneutical principle of uh, Idas form, always taken as Idas force, in order to create the awareness of first principles. So for Jean Hippolyte, Idas form is always Idas force. That becomes his hermeneutical interpretive principle for all of Hegel's phenomenology. We're going to take a look at uh, self consciousness in its entirety in this uh, fourth lesson. And so we're going to take a look at block uh, 5a, 5b, 6, and 7. That's going to be the entirety of self consciousness from, four, from 5a to block 7. Now, if we take a look at uh, 5a, we're moving uh, from concept as the IDOS forms that we acquired at the dialogue threshold that we uh, perceive as force, we transition to the true as the law of the dialectic. We discover relation and motion. And initially, in the first stage, we achieve uh, an awareness of passive coherence, our reflection is understood to actually be an altering of the concept. The self provides the measure of proportioning the objectivity of the IDAS form. And uh, by enacting this measure, we create a refraction of the universal out of the properties that veil the universal. And we end up uh, positing or projecting the projected I, or the realm of positing emerges. We find out that our free reflection and our alteration of the IDOS form becomes something that we posit over against us as an objectivity. So the realm of positing emerges. But initially we just perceive passive coherence. We uh, merely perceive the uh, IDOS concept as a representation of a passive coherence that really hasn't uh, fully become an awareness of the flow of the movement of a force. So we really haven't perceived uh, beyond the passive coherence as yet. Although we know we should get a better grasp of the full movement of the uh, IDAS form. So in 5b, we moved from uh, this awareness to the second stage, where passive coherence as entity without multiplicity is taken as that which reflects back into itself through multiplicity. So now we're going to take up the movement through multiplicity or simple coherence will reflect back into itself with a revised coherence. Simple coherence will pass through multiplicity and then return back into itself as revised coherence. So a new opposition of IDAS form emerges. It's no longer single multiple, but instead it becomes uh, the concept as or the IDAS form as being for itself versus the IDOS form going out of itself as being for another and then returning back into itself. So it's IDOS form being for itself and then IDOS form going out of itself as being for another through multiplicity and then returning back into itself. So thing evolves to relation. And we also understand uh, the idea that life is in relation. And so we realize the, uh, the truth of a 3A, that being in itself can only become being by going out of itself as being for another. And I'll say that again, that's really the axiom that Hegel really does rest on. Being in itself can only become being by going out of itself as being for another, and then returning into itself. And out of this, we uh, discover that our, our positing actually holds an imperative, a praxis imperative within it. 
if this axiom is true in 3a, then our positing is simply more than simply a positing. It participates in the becoming of being, and we are uh, confronted with a praxis imperative to go out of ourselves in action and reflection with our, within our own historical reality, a praxis imperative. So in note 5, we become aware of the reflexive moment, which takes up uh, and includes in the dialectic the infinite life, which becomes a self participating in the dialectic. The dialectic is no longer about simply um, the acquisition of IDAS forms, but now the true of history is enjoined with and reciprocally related to the true of humanity, the true of the self or self-identity. So now we have a, a dual eschatological end of the true of history and the true of humanity. The infinite life takes up both, and it becomes a praxis imperative that evolves out of that uh, axiom that being in itself can only become being by going out of itself as being for another, and therefore a self can only become a true self by going out of the self by being for another. So we take up ourselves within this same dialectic as a praxis imperative. And so that takes us to the realm of praxis, which is going to be block six. Praxis and the play of forces. We posit concept as idas force. It's a two-part positing, uh, if considered formally. The real equals force as expansion, and the possible equals force as return. Now the real or the true, this uh, formal positing takes on an objective independence of its own as the real or the true. So the realm of positing becomes the realm of the notion of the true. The realm of positing becomes the realm of the notion of the real. There's a paradox at work here. Force opposes actuality as uh, positing an ideality against it, but it needs actuality in order to exist. So a paradox is present that we want to uh, infuse our positing in actuality as an ideality, and so initially it does oppose it, but at the same time it needs it to exist. So moving on from paradox, let's take a look at note 5. Therefore, there is a play of forces at work here, says Hegel, between phenomenal reality and actual reality. Three modalities become present. There's expansion, force expands into differences in actuality through our positing. Then there's the play of forces. The two independent forces of the phenomenal and the actual interact with each other. And then through that interaction, there's a return of force being driven back onto itself or back within itself. All of this takes place within a prefiguration of the dialectic of absolute spirit, which encloses both forces of the phenomenal and the actual. That is the realm of, of absolute spirit, the realm where the two play of forces um, engage with each other, the force of actuality and the force of phenomenal truth. So note 8, the act of existence demands contact between the two forces of the phenomenal and the actual. Our positing and our praxis imperative demands actual contact, that we enter into differentiation ourselves, that we go out of ourselves as differentiation, and through differentiation our act of existence will create a contact between the phenomenal and the actual. Our differentiation creates a contact between the phenomenal and the actual. Now we're going to move on to the closing comments by Hippolyte concerning Hegel, and it's really beautiful. We're going to take a look at uh, Block 7. Now in Block 7, Hippolyte, Hippolyte tells us that uh, a hypostatic union takes place of return and possibility. He gives us five steps. We have posited a possible intelligible world in our positing of an ideality. Now, as a hypostatic union, our positing consists of a hypostatic union of the phenomenal reality that we posit and the actual reality that we want to differentiate and enter into. So both positing and the foundation of this externality are hypostatically united as one objectivity, 
within our realm of positing. I'll say that again, it's very important to understand because positing becomes an internal externality. Positing and our apprehension of the foundation of externality are both hypostatically united within us in our realm of positing. We perceive that as one objectivity. One objectivity. Now the laws of the phenomenal that work within this one objectivity are the IDOS forces that are now taken up as first principles that move through this one objectivity of our posited phenomenal model and the foundation of all external reality. The positive ideality and the foundation of reality become one objectivity to the self, one objectivity. It exists in the realm of positing and therefore this one objectivity has the IDOS forces working through it now as inherent first principles. Self-actualizing inherent first principles move this one objectivity forward. That's the beauty here where we can really understand self-actualization within Hegel. It's because we view our posited ideality of the phenomenal model and the foundation of objective external reality as one objectivity. In other words, our, in other words, our positing become, becomes an internal externality. And within that one objectivity, we view the IDOS forms now as IDOS forces that cooperate together to create the f inherent first principles that move this one objectivity forward. The inherent first principles that move this one objectivity forward. So it is a, a precise summary of self-actualization within Hegel's system. So we've ended up with a, a four-block analysis of self-consciousness this time as a, initially just beginning with that a simple coherence but then we take that simple coherence and we do take it through multiplicity and then view it as returning back on to itself. And it becomes a, much more, it becomes a, an axiom that the being in itself can only become being by going out of itself as being for another. We end up with the 5B axiom of 3A. Being in itself can only become being by going out of itself as being for another. That places on the self that chooses to seek self-identity a praxis imperative. And that puts us into the realm, realm of praxis, and praxis is action and reflection within a particular historical reality, our particular historical reality. So action and reflection makes us take up this uh, two-part process of uh, positing the expansion of the IDOS force model and then the p realization of the possible as the force as return and we do that through expansion and then we which is our positing and then we participate in and uh, witness the play of forces within actuality and out of that play e force play of forces emerges the return of force being driven back into itself with its re revised idea of universality. All of that takes place within what Hegel calls the dialectic of absolute spirit. We end up realizing that our act of existence involves the contact of these two forces, of the phenomenal and the actual. And we realize also that the phenomenal and the actual are enjoined in a hypostatic union. In a hypostatic union that establishes one externality. Our realm of positing becomes an internal externality that uh, encloses and posits and understands one externality that uh, now encloses not simply IDOS forms, not simply IDOS forces, but cooperative IDOS forces that become the inherent first principles that move all of actuality forward. IDAS forms become IDAS forces, become cooperative IDAS forces, becoming inherent first principles that self-actualize and move all of objectivity forward. 
Beautiful, beautiful insights by Jean Hippolyte. And that'll wrap up uh, lesson four on his treatise on Hegel.